Hey, what's going on? I'm Will Button from DevOps for Developers. So today we're going to be talking about secret management. And it's kind of a big topic, right? So here's the deal. You've got things in your production application, even things in staging possibly, that have usernames, passwords, um, API keys, all sorts of stuff like that that you can't just have floating around. So how do you deal with that? I'm going to give you three different ways that I have used successfully in the past to deal with that. We'll talk about the pros and cons of each, and I'll give you some tips on how to implement those. So let's get started. All right, so actually there's four ways, probably more, but we'll start with four ways because the first way is if you actually just store the credentials hard-coded in your application code itself. You know, if you do that and you don't know any better, I'm not going to call you out for it, but now you know better. So from here forward, I'll call you out on it, right? Because you can't do that. Um, just keeping it in the code there is not a safe way to manage that um, because if it's a you know, if it's something like a Git repo, then even if you delete it out of there, it's still in the Git history and you don't really have like a fine grained method of controlling that. So it's definitely not recommended to keep the sensitive environment information like that hard coded anywhere where it can just be floating around to whoever has a copy of that. So the second way of doing this, which is really, really common, and I've done this for years and years, is to pass those credentials in as environment variables to the operating system of wherever your application is running. So if you've got, if you're running in like a Docker container, right? Um, whenever that Docker container is started, you'll inject environment variables into that that contain those credential type values. And that's been around, people have been doing that for a really, really long time. So some of the caveats with that is even if you're injecting it into the operating system of the of the host of wherever it's running you still got to keep it somewhere right most commonly in my experience that's been in the um, the ci cd server if you're using jenkins or something like that or circle ci there'll be a place in there where you can go put those configuration variables in there and then give it the name of the environment variable that it gets pushed into the container as and whenever your CI CD system deploys that environment, it injects those variables in there. So you've still got it in two places now. You've got um, the running copy over in your application server as an environment variable, and then you've got your saved copy over in your CI CD system. And so you have to manage both of those, right? Or not really manage those, but you have to manage the security and the access of both of those because anyone who has access to your CI CD server could potentially have access to those values if you don't have tightly controlled permissions set up in what they can and can't access on there. And then the same thing over on the application server itself, it's just an environment variable at the operating system level. So anyone who has the ability to access that machine or that container can list all of the environment variables and get a copy of all of your all of your um, your credentials, which I think brings up the um, like the bigger part of the risk with doing this. And granted, these days it's it's not a huge risk, but it's still there, and I want to make sure you know about it. And the risk there is if an attacker is hitting your application server and they can cause it to stack dump or something like that, where it just spews out you know all of its information to the attacker uh, it's it's uh, possible that the environment variables could be listed in that so now not only has the attacker crashed your system but they've also gained access to all of the environment variables and um, the specifically the credentials that are configured as environment variables within your application so the next two techniques that we'll talk about for that kind of reduce that because they limit the scope in the fact that your credentials are pulled in by your application code itself. So they don't really exist out in the operating system layer. They only exist inside of your application, which minimizes the footprint, 
which makes it a little bit more difficult for someone to get the to get a server to cough those credentials up. The first one is reading them from a file and you see this a lot if you work with node.js you probably use env where you pull your credentials in as a file and then in a production type environment you'll have a different env.env file that your ci or cd server has and it will either package that along with your application or you can mount that as a read-only file in your docker container that your docker image can access that way so that tightens it up a little bit then because then the, the variables aren't read until your application starts. One of the risks of doing that though is now you still got this file floating around that you have to manage the security on either through restricting access to your CI CD server or restricting network access if it's a, a mounted file system and different things like that. Again, it's not impossible but it's just something that you have to be aware of the risks and put adequate controls around it, which I think is really like the overarching theme to all of these approaches, except for the first one of storing the values in code itself. Um, you know, it's, there's not really a right or wrong way to any of these. It's what works best for you. And then if you have compliant um, audits or regulatory requirements, there is no perfect way. The auditors aren't going to be looking for a perfect system. What they're going to be looking for is a documented system. This is how we do it. This is how we prove that that's how we're doing it. And here's the audit history showing what we've done with it. And that's really what you look for in a compliance type environment. Um, you look for you know the obvious stuff that can be improved on, but for most things you just look for what's the policy and how do we know that you're following the policy. And that's gonna take us right into the final way that I'm gonna tell you about for managing credentials and secrets. And it's the way that I currently do it. I've been doing it for, um, I don't know, maybe a couple years now, not terribly long, but I really, really like this method. And so what this does is I use, if I'm using like AWS, I will put the secrets in AWS Secrets Manager. And then the first part of my application will be a little function or method or whatever that goes and pulls those credentials out of Secrets Manager for that application and just stores them as variables in my application. So now the only place that they exist is in AWS Secrets Manager and in my application. When they're in AWS Secrets Manager, they're encrypted with rotating keys there and I have all of my AWS um, security and access and management tools to limit who has access to that. And then even from the application level itself, I can set up IAM roles or IAM policies. IAM, I-A-M, IAM. It's really hard for me to say. IAM. There you go. You can have that little fact for today. It's a freebie. So anyway, you can take um, I am policies and put I am policies on, let's say you're running on uh, ECS Fargate and your production application can have an I am policy applied to that that grants it the right to read from a specific AWS secrets manager store. And then that policy is going to ensure that that application can only read the secrets from that one specific store and it's read only so it can't modify them and it pulls those down, um, decrypts them using the SDK and makes them available to your application. And then that's all just running in memory so that the minute that Docker container exits, everything's gone. And uh, yeah, it's kind of secure that way. So one tip though about using AWS Secrets Manager is the cost can escalate pretty quickly. Now we're not talking like thousands and thousands of dollars, but it can run up into a few hundred bucks pretty quickly. And so one of the things that I recommend doing with that is storing, um, because you can just have in your uh, secret, you can have key value, key value, you just key value pairs in there, or you can just load a JSON object in there. And that's what I recommend doing. So you just load a single JSON object that has all of the credentials for your application as one item in an AWS secret store, and that will help you save costs on it. 
then whenever you read that from your application, you know it's JSON, so you parse it as such, and you go on from there. Now I've had a few clients I've worked with that had um, more secrets than what you could put in a single AWS secret store value. And in those situations, so that's actually quite a lot of data. I think it's like um, 1,024 kilobits. I can't remember, but it's, it's quite a bit of data in there. So I think for me, that's a really, really good opportunity to ask a couple questions like one, are all of those really secrets or do we have some config values in there that we could break out into a separate config file? So make sure that we're treating config values separate from secrets because the two, while possibly closely related, are not the same in terms of the amount of security you have to wrap around them. The other part is if you really, really have that many secrets in your application, it's a good chance to evaluate like what are you really what are you really talking to here? Because a secret kind of implies some form of secure access to some usually to some external resource. And if your application has that many external dependencies on it, I think it's a good opportunity to review exactly what the dependencies of your application are and make sure that you've got a plan on managing the data that's going to those external sources um, and that you've got adequate testing and fallback behavior so that when those external resources aren't available, you still provide a great user experience for your customers. So to me, if, if you really can't fit it into a single store, it's a good opportunity to take a look at what you're really storing and make sure that you're not just letting your app explode and not really thinking through the long-term goals and objectives for serving your customers whatever service they're coming to you for. Okay, so I think that's about it. Um, and like I said, you know, it really doesn't matter which one of these three that you choose, as long as you just have that as a documented, repeatable process, and you've identified what the weaknesses of that are, and you have strategies in place to mitigate and control the access to it. So first one, injecting it as environment variables. Um, second one, reading from a file. Third one, using a secure storage system like AWS Secrets Manager. Hope that was helpful. If it was, be sure and click the like button down below and go ahead and click the subscribe button as well so that you can be notified whenever I release new videos coming out now a couple times every week. All right, thanks and I'll see you next time.